Alkadosh, Boker, or day nine. Okay, this is Bikin Balacha Siman one on page 36, Alacha Tedvav. Some Torah authorities claim that a person should sleep during the beginning of the night and spend the latter part of the night studying Torah. This, they explain, is better for a person's health and better for him spiritually as well, which means sleep at the beginning of the night, right? I know people that they sleep, they do both. They'll sleep at the beginning and the end of the night, but it doesn't matter. But he says, but the Talmud and the Rambam, I want to say clearly, that sleeping at the end of the night towards the dawn is the best for one's health. Therefore, if someone wishes to schedule himself to study Torah during the first hours of the night and then go to sleep afterwards, it's also permissible. Meaning, as long as you have Kavanah for Hashem, it's all the same thing. Meaning that obviously it's a, I think also the Fuad, they say the same thing, correct? Meaning that the health, they do say that the, the end of the night is the best of sleep. Correct or not? The deep sleep is the, is the last part of the sleep. Okay, fine. On the cycle. Okay, fine. So here it says number 21. When is it best to sleep? Ben Ishchai stated that it's healthier physically and spiritually to sleep during the first half of the night. But Yishon Etzion, however, pointed out that the Gimaran Berachot teaches that sleep is most beneficial towards dawn. The Rambam also stated that one should sleep during the latter part of the night until daybreak. The Rambam recommended sleeping for eight hours a night and waking up shortly before sunrise. The Yishon Etzion added that Sfardi knows this concurs with contemporary medical opinion as well. Okay? In the Sefer Mekab Tziel, Rav Yosef Chaim added, when a person first sleeps and then he rides to study Torah after midnight, he brings more pleasure to Hashem when studying Torah at other times. Furthermore, he claimed that one can concentrate best on his studies at the time since, at that time, since it's quiet and there's no disturbances or distractions. Regarding one's physical health, he asserted that two hours of sleep before midnight are more beneficial to one's body than four hours of sleep after midnight. Wow. Is that correct, Walter? Okay. This is the Ben Yishai. This matches its comment to the Ben Yishai explaining that when one studies Torah during the hours after midnight, it's beneficial in multiple ways. He studied the Zohar Kadosh extolling this, the virtues of this practice. Although Madani Shalat Zion challenged the claim that sleep is more beneficial physically before midnight, he did not challenge the claims that Torah study after midnight has greater spiritual value. Okay, the Ben Yishai's claims about the health benefits of rising before dawn are supported by the Ruach Haim Falache who described a list of behaviors that pro promote longevity. He stated it is known from experience that all who lived to a ripe old age maintain the practice of rising before dawn. In fact, the British diplomat Wellesley adopted this practice as a cardinal rule of health based on the adage, early to bed and early to rise make a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. A very interesting adage. And he lived to the ripe age of 88. Yeah, He claimed that the habit promotes one's health, intelligence, and strength. There are those who argue that it is better to remain out of bed until one becomes quite sleepy, so one will not suffer, suffer lying awake for a long time and able to fall asleep. I promise, however, that it is simply a matter of habit. It is best, therefore, to follow the prescription and rise early each morning, even if it's difficult in some days. After keeping such a schedule for six or seven days, it will become easy to fall asleep re early in the evening as soon as one lies down in bed. The main thing is to make sure to rise early each morning, no matter what went on the night before. One's health and longevity depend upon waking up early in the morning and not on the time that one goes to sleep. Meaning, it doesn't matter what time you go to sleep, you have to wake up early. The Shomea. Marana Rishon Etzion wrote, In my youth, I saw that most of the older rabbis, truly holy and devout men, maintain the practice of sleeping during the first hours of the night, rising at midnight and studying Torah until dawn. This is an ancient practice according to the Holy Zohar Kadosh. I, however, have since my childhood adopted the practice of studying Torah through the evening, going to sleep only after midnight, relying on a sage's teaching in Yomah, whenever, whichever practice one adopts is fine, as long as one devotes himself to Akadosh Baruch Hu the best way he can, Hashem will surely reward him, everyone, for his efforts. The Seven Mishmel Shalom notes that in modern times, people sleeping and waking schedule have been altered. This is especially true since the adver uh, advent of artificial lighting, both indoors and outdoors. Nevertheless, Hashem does not make unreasonable demands of us. Okay. Why? Because at the end of the day, we have to pay attention. Fine. Connecting the day with nighttime. Look in the top. It is recommended to devote some Torah side, sometime just before sunset and until after dusk to study Torah. So he joins the night and the day, the day and the night with his individual. Likewise, it's recommended to devote time before dawn until after dawn to study Torah the same reason. 
is not imperative, however, and one may choose to ignore these instructions. The main thing is to make sure to devote time both during the day and during the night. Meaning there's a concept of connecting day and night. That's the concept, okay? So it says you're connecting day and night with Torah. The Ben Ishchai, he instructs us to rise from bed somewhere before dawn, so that way we can engage in Torah study as the night ends and the day begins. Likewise, we should get in Torah study right towards the evening as the day ends and the be night begins. The source of the practice is the Shla Kadosh brought out of Ram. There's a basis to justify those who do not observe this practice. However, the Emek She'ela, he suggests that this practice is alluded to in the Gemara and Yerushalmi. But Kapara taught, even if a person reviewed only two chapters in the morning, again in the evening, he has filled the commandment of Apparently, this can be fulfilled by connecting day and night on both ends. Therefore, the instructions are to study two portions of Lachad each juncture, morning and evening, one portion do during one during the night. The Babli, however, disagrees with this. In Menachot 99b, it says that one follows the command by studying only one chapter in the morning and one in the evening, meaning not two Lachot in the day, two, he says one and one. Apparently, it does not make it necessary to connect the day and the night. The instructions given by the Shlakadosh, therefore, are only recommendation to satisfy the student opinion of the Talmud Yerushalmi. The Shulchan Esh wrote that the correct way to connect day and night and is through prayers and reciting Tilim, whereas in the evening, it's through Torah. Meaning in the morning, you say Tilim, you say this, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. What about napping during the day? Some people, they take, uh, you know, 20, 20 minutes. This, that, 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 that. So napping during the day, she <laughs> says, our sages taught, Rav said, she said, it is forbidden to sleep during the day for longer than a horse's nap. How long is a horse's nap? 60 breaths. Now she explains, that, right, that daytime napping is forbidden because it wastes time that could have been used for Torah study. This passage is said in the Allah, Rabbi Yitzhak Rafasi, Rif, the Rosh, and the Rambam, accordingly. The Rabbat Tulim states, after eating the evening meal, one should return to his Torah studies. If he cannot learn continuously without napping during the day, it's permitted, but he must not nap a very long time. Madan ruled in the Shulchan Aruch, likewise, that one must not nap during the day longer than a horse's nap, which is 60 breaths. So the Machatzita Shekel, however, states that this is not always the case. Some people need to nap during the day in order to function properly and serve Hashem. And this is also said in the Mishnah Brandi Afelelev. If this issue is examined from a rational standpoint, the ruling Machatzita Shekel is above any challenge. From the viewpoint of the Kabbalah, however, it seems one must invariably avoid sleeping. Okay, so Alpia Kabbalah, don't sleep. The Shara Mitzvot is adamant about this, explaining that daytime naps may cause a person to lose his part of his neshama. Okay, the Ben Ishchai in the Rav Pe'alim was asked if there's any Kabbalah, halachic basis to permit napping for an hour or more each day, as many people have become accustomed to doing. Yeah, I know people, the Mamash, they, 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 you know, afternoon, you know. He replied that if people are exhausted because they were up most of the night studying Torah, this can certainly be excused. Although the Arizal warned that this might harm one's soul, this is surely for great tzaddikim with enhanced souls who are liable to lose such, en such enhancements. Nowadays, as we can assume that they were not worthy of such enhanced souls in the first place, so for no spiritual harm will come right during the daytime napping. He referred to the sponsor of Torah Lishma. In conclusion, the Yaku Yosef ruled that it's preferable to avoid na daytime napping and spend one's time studying Torah, but if a nap will help to concentrate better on the studies, it is going to be permitted, but the nap should be limited length. Whatever one does, one's intention should be for the sake of Shamayim. Meaning, always have kavana, right? 16. Okay? 16. The practice of rising at dawn to pray Shachri to sunrise is given great importance, and anyone who can maintain this practice without it, adver without it adversely affecting his to Torah study should do so. If studying late at night makes it impossible for one to rise at dawn in order to pray shachrit with the sunrise, but he will still be able to rise in time to pray with congregation with proper time, he may continue to study Torah late at night. If someone is studying Torah late at night and realizes if he remains awake any longer, he will likely uh, sleep until the time of morning Shema and the morning prayers will have class, he should stop studying and go to sleep immediately. One must arrange one's schedule so that way he will be able to fulfill these mitzvot properly. Meaning a person shouldn't be a haham, a ah, He's going to stay up until four in the morning, and then uh, he get you know he only wakes up at uh, you know twelve o'clock, and then you know, ah, let me do shachri now. You understand? Know Doesn't work. Yes, you're right. Twenty two, when studying late at night, clashes with the morning prayers. The Orlet Zion commented that some of the yeshiva students study Torah diligently until very late at night, but then they wake up late in the morning until after the time of the Kriyat Shema. He expresses wonder how people could use Hashem's Torah in a manner in a manner contrary to His will. He said it of Tzadka Hussein. He says, relating this practice was always to rise and pray Shakri with the sunrise. One day he woke somewhat late and decided not to go to synagogue. He was afraid that he would make a Chilul Hashem if people saw him arriving late at the synagogue. 
if someone is incapable of rising in time to pray with the sunrise, he must at least make sure not to miss the time in order to the mitzvot of saying Kriyat Shema. Nevertheless, one must not disparage others even when they see them arriving late in the synagogue. Perhaps there's a reason to justify their later arrival. I mean, sometimes, okay, they came late, but maybe they were up very late, this, that, whatever the case was, they have it. What about relying on the limit time, on the time limit prescribed by Rav Eliyahu of Vilna? The Al-Qudis say that there's a halachic base if someone studied Torah until late at night, even though he realizes that by doing so, he's not going to re- w- wake up in the morning too early for the Magen of Raham, but he'll still make the time of the Gaumi Vilna of, Shachri, of, um, of the Kriyat Shema. Meaning there are two times for Kriyat Shema, Magen of Raham and Gaumi Vilna. What happens now? So he says that he's shown Sion ruled that it is incorrect to rely upon the Gaum Vina regarding the window of the time of Kriyat Shema. One should also do one's best to recite it according to Magen Abraham unless there's an emergency forcing one to delay reciting. In such a case, then it's permitted in some sense communities have double practice of relying upon the opinion of the Gaum Vina as the Rechida testified. This seems to contradict the leniency forwarded by the Elkut Yosef. Meaning that the Mishon Etzion was very strict. The Chathila always do. By the way, Maran was posek like the Magen Abraham as well. So that means lechatchila always try to be machmir like Magen Abraham. Obviously, you can't find you have what to rely on, but I'm saying, but obviously lechatchila there's a little.